Our lesson today is entitled, The Lord's Supper, and it's found in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 22, verses 7 through 23. This is Sunday School Lesson for April the 21st, 2024. My name is Tony Miller, and the key verse for our lesson today is found in the 18th and 19th verses of the text, and it reads as follows, For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. And he took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. And he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, the Lord's Supper is our subject today. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to explore the principle behind the Lord's Supper commit to the Lord's Supper as Jesus would have us do and feel motivated to teach someone about the importance of the Lord's Supper. This is my YouTube channel. As you please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll get my lessons automatically. But give any value at all, please like my lessons, please share my lessons and leave me comments. All of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are just grateful for another lesson that you've given unto us, Lord, about this covenant that you left for us, remembrance, Lord, and we are grateful for those who have assembled at this moment, Lord, and we ask to you give us of our sins and wash us and make us worthy vessels to be used by you. We surrender our will to you at this moment. Send us the true teacher, the Holy Spirit, to guide and direct our path. Thank you for all that you've done and you're doing in our lives in the matchless name of Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer. In this name, we do pray and ask these things always. Amen. So here in the Gospel according to Luke, and a summary of this book is the Gospel of Luke. Is, it was likely written between 58 and, and 65 uh, AD, uh, and, and the purpose was to reveal the life and teaching of Jesus Christ. And the unique features was the perspective of Dr. Luke provides an orderly account. Remember, he's a doctor, so that means he has more of a different analytical account, uh, emphasizing the details often omitted by the other gospel writers. Because so I share with you that they're all from their different points of view, depending on the experience that they had in their life, which motivates us or gives us to skew from their point of view. His meticulous history highlights Jesus' ministry to Gentiles. Samaritans, women, children, tax collectors, and sinners. Remember, he was a Gentile, so we'd have a different point of view as someone who's a, who's a, who had been bumped into that Jewish faith their whole life. Those often regarded as outcasts in Israel. Again, summary of the book of, of the Gospel according to Dr. Luke. Amen. So how did we get here today? Let's give you some background and we'll jump into our lesson amen so jesus last week was on earth that's what we are here and it's it's, it's a it's tuesday and, and wednesday that i'm share and we'll move into tuesday and wednesday and thursday is the day that we will we will talk about today and and then and when jesus is tuesday and wednesday jesus and his disciples will spend another night in bethany and possibly at, at lazarus house i share with you that in, in other lessons that that more than likely that when they would go back to Bethany, it was in Lazarus' house because he was a friend, Mary and Martha and her sister, and 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 and, and it's, it's believed that they would spend that time before the crucifixion at Lazarus' house. Amen. What would also be happening here on this Tuesday was Judas would make a deal. So they counted out the 30 pieces of silver and they gave it to him. And then on, he watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over. <clears throat> and the Bible indicates that Tuesday was a day that Jesus Iscariot negotiated with the Sanhedrin, the rabbinical court of ancient Israel to betray Jesus. And he got those 30 pieces of silver for this, silver for this betrayal. Again, the perspective was happening here on this Tuesday before uh, Jesus would go to the cross, be sin sacrifice for humanity. Next slide. So 
So also on this Tuesday, Jesus is anointed there in Bethany. And while Jesus was at Bethany, a woman came having an expensive bottle of oil. And she began to anoint Jesus with this oil. That was that whole concept of hospitality. And I've shared with you before that even in the days back in when I live and my, my, my family members come from the south, and they'll come up to our house and drive in a, a long time. My mom would, would, would tell them to come in and they would go and use the restroom and she would have a towels there they can wash their face and wash their hands and she would have some lemonade or some ice water or something like that that's a whole that hospitality component and sit down on the couch prop your feet up have great conversation that was that whole concept of hospitality that they would have as jesus and his disciples would arrive in bethany at, the, at possibly lazarus house and, and and that's that whole hospitality thing and here they would anoint him with oil Again, the symbolization of what was going to happen to him. And the disciples saw this, and many were upset because the oil was so expensive, and they thought the oil could be could have been sold to be given to the poor, especially Judas. He was upset because, remember, he was the treasurer of the disciples, and immediately afterwards is when Jesus Judas would go to meet the Jewish religious leaders. Maybe he was ticked by this in a moment, but regardless of the fact, these are events, events that happened on Tuesday there in Bethany. Amen. And Wednesday, there's no record in the gospel to determine what actually happened on Wednesday, but uh, much activity must have occurred in that coming in the coming days. Jesus prepares for the Last Supper and Judas and the Sanhedrin prepare for Jesus' arrest and Jesus and his disciples remain in Bethany throughout Wednesday and continue to stay the night there. Some perspective for you all. Amen. And and, and so it's now Thursday. And, and that's the Passover and the, and the Last Supper and the, and the betrayal that all these would occur on this Thursday. I'll give me some magnification here. Amen. This Passover is, a, is an event that I remember happened in Egypt, and and remember Almighty God was preparing to take the Israelites out of Egypt, and He instructed Moses to tell the people of Israel to prepare by by bringing the sheep into the homes on that night, and He was about to bring death upon the Egyptians and the Israelites to slaughter the lambs, and they were also to, instructed to take the blood of the lamb and smear it on the doorposts. And the, and the header as a sign uh, to God that this is an Israelite home to be passed over while the death angel visited upon the firstborn of all the other homes and God will kill the firstborn and also the firstborn animal as well and this is what gave the Passover sacrifice the holy the, its holiday its name the death angel would pass over the Israelite homes, and and again, the judgment that God will have upon his on the Egyptians, then let His people go. Amen. The background is short and sweet, about eight minutes. Let's get into this lesson. It's got some great content. I hope you find some value in what God has given to me to share with you today. Amen. So here we're in chapter 22, and we began in chapter 7. I thought, again, like always, I believe it's relevant to give you the, the verses that would lead up to chapter 7, where we began here in our lesson. And the festival of unleavened bread, which is also called the Passover, was approaching. And, leading, and, and the leading priests and teachers of religious law were plotting how to kill Jesus. They didn't like the fact that he was getting too popular. They didn't like the fact that he had already turned over these money tables, and and he was and he was telling about their their vipers, and he was he was uh and he was messing up their money and their power and influence, and he was disrupting. He was a disruptor of society according to them, and and they were no longer relevant. That he is taking all the air out of the room, and and everybody's following him and not following them, and they are, they're plotting to kill Jesus, but they're afraid of the people's reaction, and then Satan would enter into Jesus Iscariot, that one who would betray her. 
was one of the twelve disciples, and he went into the leading priests and captains of the temple guard to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. And they're delighted. <clears throat> and they promised to give him money. So he agreed and began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. And so they could arrest him when the crowds weren't around. You know the story. Just give me some perspective of what happens here in these first six verses leading up to where we are today. In verses 7 through 23. Amen. <clears throat> So Sunday school lesson, the Lord's Supper is our, is our subject, and we're here in, in, in chapter 22 of the, the Gospel according to Luke, and we're in verses 7 to uh, 23, and we began here in verses 7 and 8 of the text. And now the festival of unleavened bread arrived. Again, to share where we are, and the Passover lamb is sacrificed on that day that the, that the priests would go into the temple right and the, and, the, and the priests would go and they would offer the sacrifice to, uh, to for the people. In verse 8, and Jesus and Peter and, and John uh, ahead uh, and went ahead and said, uh, 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 Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, go and prepare the Passover meal so that uh, we can eat it together. And, and you know, I, I've have, I have some Jewish friends that I've, I've had an opportunity to have the Passover meal is a significant event. I'll share with you in the next few cells to magnify this event in the life of the Jewish people in that day and even in today's uh, era, that this is an important moment in the life cycle of God's people. Amen. The Feast of Unleavened Bread celebrates the journey of the children of Israel through the wilderness then following Passover and the Exodus, they ate unleavened bread for 30 days, which then was substituted by means of actual food, which Yahweh himself provided for them the rest of their journey to, to the promised land of Israel, where they would remain there for 40 years because of their sin, right? And the fact that it was unleavened symbolized the fact that they were not taking with them uh, any of the contaminating influences of of, of, of Egypt. Remember, Egypt was an idolatrous nation that the Pharaoh believed that he was God on earth, and they still had the, the golden calves and all the other uh, gods that they had there in Egypt, which represented the culture of the, of the world. Remember, Egypt, Egypt was the most dominant culture in the world at that, 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 that time, that, that, that God wanted only the pure bread of life to travel with them. And, and I share with you that, 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 that they have unleavened bread and the Passover that Peter sent John. I mean, Jesus and uh, Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat. Just give you some perspective. Let's talk about this meal. Amen. So the Seder plate, and this is, a, they all have symbolic pieces to it. And they, on all of them, the food has a symbolic moment. When I went to visit folks, this is what we we kind of had, and, and 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 again, it begins with the bitter herbs that are that are on the plate, and they're uh, representing the better times as slaves, and 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 the roasted egg was a new life after Egypt, and and the parsley is vegetables is a sign of new life, and the and the, uh, the mixed apples and cinnamon and nuts and wine are the mortars used for making bricks for the slaves, and and the salt water was the tears of the slaves, and the, the lamb bone sacrifice of the last night. And then this whole this this whole unleavened bread. This is this matzah that, that, that we had and when we had dinner. It's unleavened bread. And it, it was it was unleavened because at the time when they had to leave Egypt that, that you know when you make bread you have to you have to make it and then you have to put it in the bowl and let it rise and then you have to proof it, and you have to again, man, let it rise again. It will take time, and, and and again, that they were they when they were escaping e uh, Egypt, they just they didn't have time, so they they had this bread that was not proofed, that it was unleavened, and that's the whole concept of this unleavened bread. Give you some perspective of what and why this this dinner was important, the elements that they would share doing during this din dinner is important to this people. Supporting to Jesus as well at this moment that he was sharing this moment with his disciples. Amen. I 
verse 9 of the text. And they said to him, again, speaking to Jesus, where will you that we prepare? And, and I, I want to I wanna interject something here. You know, I often don't use the King James and, and only because that sometimes it's a little clunky. Where will you that we prepare? That that, you know, again, it, it could have been said differently, at least from our n normal vernacular. And, and that's why sometimes I use the New Living or the NIV or I use more modern text sometimes. It doesn't take away from the, the subject. It just gives us more clarity in our own language. Amen. Let's move on. Amen. And verses nine, uh, 10 and 12 of our text. And he, Jesus, said unto them, those disciples, Behold, when ye are entered into the city, there shall be a man, a man, uh, there shall a man meet you, and bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into a house where <coughs> he entered in. And ye shall say unto the, the, uh, the good man of the house, the master said unto thee, where is the guest chamber and where shall and where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples and he shall show you a large upper room furnished where there make ready again the gospel according to Luke chapter 22 verses 10 through 12 from the King James point of view again Jesus told his disciples to meet this man carrying a jug of water. He will take you to that upper room to have this dinner. Let's move on. In verses 12 and 13 of this text. And, and he will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. And that is where you shall prepare our meal. And they went off into the city and found everything just as Jesus has said and they prepared the Passover meal there and I share with you that I, I want to interject another thing that I think is kind of um, it's kind of maybe outside of your understanding but again that that the tables in that day were not like the large tables like we have in our day so often when you see these pictures of of Jesus and disciples in the Last Supper and you see these big old tall tables with large legs that's not how it was. Even my first image I share with you had the large leg, but that's not how it was. This is more of the tables that they had uh, in that day that had very small, uh, a very low table, and they would lean on these on these uh, on these uh, pillows that were around the table. I'll share with you more images as we move along in our text, but just give you some perspective of what was happening at this moment. That he said that the room was already prepared, and they were now going to have this Passover meal with Jesus. Again, the word of God for the people of God. Amen. The Lord's Supper. And again, if you see this image, I kind of cropped it down, but if you see that the image of this, that they're much sitting much lower and not sitting at the normal level. And when the time came, in the fullness of time, in the fullness of time, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Again, an important event in the life cycle of humanity. In verse 15, and Jesus says, I have been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering began. That, that now that Jesus' three and a half year ministry is winding down, that, that, that it's, it's coming a point where he will be fulfilling the mission he's come to this earth to do. The very word of God in the bosom of the Father before the foundation of the earth. The very word of God was made flesh that would tabernacle among us for 33 and a half years and, and three and a half years of his ministry that now that the, that that his suffering will become is, is coming to it will begin that he is a lamb of God, the one who the prophesied Messiah, the one will come to restore the relationship with Brooklyn, the restore the relationship with man, the one who will give Gentiles an opportunity to have an access to our holy and righteous father by this this Messiah, this Jesus, and again, he's at this event is important. And verse 16, for I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until it's 
meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And, and I don't know, and probably this passes by you a lot of times and a lot of folks that don't put this in perspective. And my goal today with, is with you is that, again, it was to illuminate this whole concept of this event for you. And, and, and this text sometimes verse 16 goes by folks, but I'm not gonna let it happen for you at this moment. And in verse 16 is important uh, in the context of this passage. It says, for I tell you, that I won't eat this meal again and until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Now, what does Jesus mean by this statement? Let's move on to the next verse or the next images that I'll share with you. Amen. That, that Jesus is mentioned about the marriage supper of the Lamb. And, and, and I'm hoping that you understand what this is and what this event, again, is spoken in Revelation 19 and 7. I know many of you don't ever even study the, 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 the book of Revelation. I, again, I know a lot of pastors don't even know how to even teach the, the, the book of Revelation. But again, Jesus will speak of an event that will happen, this marriage supper of the Lamb. We magnify it for you, again, magnify in verse 16 of our text as well. Amen. But again, this is a Passover. And that the Passover, that 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 the, the priests would go into the temple and they would go uh, and they would sacrifice for every family and they would give them a, 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 a lamb uh, without spot and blemish. <clears throat> and, 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 and that lamb would be offered upon the the altar of God, and and again that 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 lamb would be uh, would be uh, offered for the sins of 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 the people, and the and the 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 uh, the the whole, the the the, uh, the high priest would offer that sacrifice for the people, and people would offer their own sacrifices as well. And Jesus was that lamb of God who would who would come to to be the the once and for all sacrifice. They would have to do this every year after year after year, but Jesus would be the Lamb of God who would take away the sins of humanity, the once and for all, the one who is perfect, who's a perfect sacrifice. He was all man and all God, and he would be the once and for all sacrifice for humanity. He came to be that Messiah, that sacrificial Lamb of God. And again, that's why he's a Lamb, the, the marriage supper of the Lamb of God, the marriage supper of Jesus we would have an event in God's kingdom with this Jesus. Again, magnifying verse 16. I got more to share with you to magnify in this point. Amen. Verse, verse 16, for I tell you that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And that's that marriage of the Lamb that I share with you. It's a wedding dinner that takes place between Jesus, the Lamb of God, and the Bride of Christ, and we're that Bride of Christ. You know that we're the Bride, that he would come, uh, and we would be the Bride. That's that whole thing. And I share with you the three phases of the ancient uh, wedding of, 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 a, of a marriage, and we know that, that there's a betrothal process that began with the marriage contract signed between the parents and the bridegroom. We know that same thing would happen with Mary and Joseph as well, as well right? And the bridegroom and his parents paid a dowry for the bride and her parents. This is marked by a betrothal process akin to today's engagement. And that's what Jesus would do, that he would pay that, 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 that price at the cross, right? That, that he that we'll be betrothed to him and that he would go to the cross and he would pay that dowry. He would pay, we'll be betrothed to him and he would pay the price. And later the bridegroom's arrival, the count is made with friends and would visit the bridegroom's house and it happened at night and they would create a a, a, a torchlight parade through the streets and the bride and her maids would join the parade and in the bridegroom's home again, return of Christ. Again, this whole concept is, is, is has some imagery as well, but this is how it is in the third phase is a marriage supper, this marriage supper, the lamb that we're talking about the death of Christ, the return of Christ. And now that there will come an event 
And whether that's a rapture would take us into the glory and we will go in heaven or the end of days and when the, when Jesus would come and, and, and return saints as well that would come and defeat the Antichrist and the false prophet. And, and all those would do is bidding the whole unholy trinity and 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 again that this would happen and again that that again that there will be a marriage supper of the lamb the third phase actual marriage feast which we will last for days like that wedding in canada that we share with you mimifies this intended celebration that we would have that it says that we'll do that that we'll do in in, in glory that we will have a, a marriage supper with Jesus once again. And, and that's why it's important that he that he says in, in verse 16, I won't do it again until that I, I do it in the king in my kingdom. That's why I magnify this point for you that it has more symbolism than just running by words on a page that have no no meaning to you. That's an important event that will happen in human history. Again, the word of God for the people of God. Let's move on. Amen. Verse 17 through 19 of our text. And then Jesus, he took the cup of wine. And he gave thanks to God for it. And he says, take this and share it among yourselves. And again, that's why I share with you that I, I that in that that modern translations give you a little bit more magnification. He wanted them to share among themselves again. That's what he did. He took that, that cup and they shared it among themselves. Verse 18, for I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come again, that he will drink that wine with us at that marriage. Supper the lamb that I shared with you. He's not going to do it again. I'm not going to drink wine again to us with us until we, that verse 16, until that moment where we'll have that marriage of the Lamb when we're going in the kingdom of God, right? Verse 19, and he took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. And he broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you again. And being that Lamb of God, he being the sacrificial Lamb of God, would take away the sins of the world, just like that lamb that the that the priest would do to offer on the sacrifice of God, that he was the lamb of God. This is my body, which is given for you. And again, that Jesus surrendered. They didn't take his body. He surrendered, which is given. And that's why you were, that point is given, not, not taken for you. And Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. This is an important moment. This is an important moment in humanity. This is the most important moment in humanity as well. Let's move on. This last supper. Let's magnify some points here about this. Amen. Last supper, we call it communion, is a, a reminder that Jesus, what Jesus did in the past a symbol of our present relationship with him as we do it in remembrance of him constantly and a promise of what he will do in the future. I share with you that lambs, that, that great, that, uh, that, that wedding that, and this, uh, that we do in the future in the same way after the supper, he took the cup saying, this is the covenant of my blood. It's a covenant that Jesus would make and covenants are important for us, a blood covenant is important because the covenant in the ancient world was, was done by blood. It's just like, remember back in the day, you would have blood brothers. You would cut your hand, another person would cut their hand, and you would make a blood covenant. The, the blood covenant is one that was made throughout time as being one that was unbreakable, right? It's a covenant in my blood, and which is poured out for you. We drink a small amount of wine or grape juice at the Lord's Supper. We remind, we remember that Jesus' blood was shed for us. And that his blood inaugurated a new covenant. Just as the old covenant was sealed with the sprinkling of the blood, the new covenant established by Jesus is the blood covenant as well. Again, the magnification, there's a moment for you. I just My goal is to make this more important to you. Let's talk about the bread next. Amen.
And I know that we're speaking of this moment at the, at the Last Supper, but Jesus would have this encounter again in John the 6, 15 through 51 through 56. And, and Jesus would have this encounter. And he says that I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. He's the living bread. That whoever eats this bread will live forever. Again, Jesus would have this encounter and, and will live forever. And this bread is my flesh which I give for the life of the world. Again, the mission that he would come to do, right? And when the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, how can this man give his flesh to eat? That's what they would have and have this argument in their, in their, in their, in their amongst them. Said, and Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And those of us in this modern, in our modern age, in our current age, so many of us have no relationship with God. They have no understanding about the, uh, the, about the Lord's Supper. They have no understanding about communion. And again, he says, that if that's not a part of your life, then you have no life with Jesus, and you will die in your sins. You will find yourself in the lake of fire. But whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise them up in the last days. And that's an important moment that we all will face in the last days that we all go before our holy and righteous Father. That all humanity will stand there and all will, will, uh, will go and many will fall and are be thrown into a lake of fire. But those of us that have a relationship with this Jesus. He says he will raise us up in that last day that we will go and spend eternity with him. And my flesh is real food. My blood is real drink. And whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Again, an encounter that Jesus would have with these religious leaders before this moment. Again, this last supper with Jesus. Amen. Verse 20 of our text. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper and saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. I'm talking about this covenant component, and I just think I need to give you a little bit more, and as we'll get into this next cell, then maybe it'll help you out a bit again about this blood covenant concept. Amen. But Jesus, again, like the Lord's Supper is our subject, but Jesus emphasized that the cup represents the blood that he shed at that cross, that he will shed at that cross, right? But that that he will go, and you know that he will shed the 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 the, the, uh, the uh, soldier would would stick his his spear in the blood, and water would come out of of the Jesus. And again, that blood that was shared at that cross ratified that 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 covenant that he makes at that moment will be su be ratified, made sufficient for us at that moment and it'll be inaugurated and started. That's when the covenant began at that moment when 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 he when he when he went to the cross for humanity and and and, and that covenant is not what everybody is all but only with believers who put their hope and trust in this Jesus. And historically throughout time when the covenant was made it was often inaugurated and ratified by blood by blood sacrifice. We know that when Adam and Eve, when they left the garden, that they left in animal skins, that something had to die. Again, that is in with Noah, that after he would take those animals on the ark for 40 days and 40 nights, and we would come out, and then he would make a sacrifice to God for humanity and God for only the, the, the eight of them, the, the, the six is his, his three sons and their wives as, as well. But he, but again, that, that was a covenant that he made, the no hide covenant when he told them these five, I think five or six things that they need to do. But again, it, it was a, a, a covenant that he would make with Noah and, and humanity and he'd go and make government and 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 and, and, uh, and to serve God and, and don't don't kill and do all these things that he said at that moment. But it was a, a covenant that he made with Noah with blood, right? 
and he made a covenant with Adam and with Abraham as well. And remember the circumcision that you would have to cut away the, the foreskin of the penis. Again, that was blood would be present in that covenant that he makes in him. The, the covenant he made with Moses that would go in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the wilderness that they would have and they would constantly make these sacrifices to God would go out through time. So God would make more covenants with man. <coughs> I mean, more sacrifices and transactions that God would have with humanity and ultimately end up with this moment that we have at this moment where there will be a covenant with Jesus and humanity that he would make this covenant with people, with God's people, those who put their hope and trust in him. But at that cross, he ratified a covenant that was made sufficient and that's when it began with believers. Amen. It's still Thursday. The Last Supper with his disciple Jesus would make this uh, dinner here. And, and again, I share with you, this table is much lower and they would lean on the pillows and lean on this table. When the evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And, and when, while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sad and began to say to him one after another surely you don't mean me the work i think this is i think this is my uh this excerpt is from matthew i think where i, I, I acquired this and jesus replied, replied the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me this event that happened you see the one sitting next to him is judas is scary and you know, he, he would say the lord Lord, no, me? Every one of them would all would, would have the same thing that they would all, and, and that, but Jesus says, the one who dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me, and that would be the one, Judas Iscariot. Let's move on. Amen. Verses 22 and 23, the last two verses of our text. Jesus asked the one who hands me over is the one I eat with daily. The one who passes me food at the table. And the Son of Man will go as it has been decreed. But woe unto the man who betrays him. Again, speaking of that, Judas is scary. I share with you that woe has a significant meaning of grief and all. And they began to question among themselves which of them might be who do this. But Jesus says, the one who hands me over is one I eat daily who passes me food at this table. And Jesus has already met with those rulers. He is now arranging to deliver Jesus to them. And he got his 30 pieces of silver for this dirty deed. And Jesus already knows this. Again. The word of God. The people of God. This ends our printed text. I think I have one or two cells to close out this lesson for you. Amen. So I hope I've magnified the Lord's Supper, this Last Supper. Again, is it the Last Supper really? I don't think so, but I share with you. Some people call it the Last Supper, but it's the Lord's Supper with Jesus. And I, I, do you have a better understanding of this event in your life, in our life now? I'm hoping that I've given you some things that kind of magnify some, I've magnified some points of this, this whole event that happens here at this moment for you. <clears throat> My goal always is to give you something important. Remember, this is an important moment in our life. Whenever we participate in this moment, that I go to a church, I remember going to a church before where uh, that it was an important moment, and then we made it an important moment. But it's not always that way in some churches. They don't make it an important moment. We dimmed the lights. We had all the all right ambiance and made this moment an important moment. Again, the goal today is that we should make this an important moment in our life. 
we whether we do it every week like in the church I go to or we do it once a month it's supposed to be do it in remembrance of Jesus that's the exact objective that he says that it's supposed to be an important and solid moment last so amen so on this marriage supper of the lamb I share with you in Revelation 19 and I only have one question for you Will you be there for the next supper? Again, will you be there? And that is my Sunday school lesson for this week. My prayer is something you've learned this week. Strengthen your faith. The Lord provides all you need. You learn something worthy of sharing. It's a match thing with Jesus. We do pray and ask these things always. Thanks so much for your time. Amen.